What I experience um, in my work too is that a lot of times when I work with a client and, you know, as they're actually, I guess I would refer to it as having a healing experience of connecting with someone um, maybe who has passed that, you know, they've there, it's part of their grieving process that it opens them in a way and opens their heart so that they then are able to just be a little more in tune with their intuition and their connection and really feel that connection with their loved one, or maybe be a little more aware and open to like the signs that they might be giving them to let them know that they're still there with them and connecting with them. So that's when, even though someone might just not be full blown open to all of this, they are able to um, experience it in a way that makes them, uh, helps them feel a little more connected, I think. Welcome to In Vibe Live Conversations with Amy Parker and Cheryl Dunn. By tuning in, you are joining a community that will inspire you to increase balance, wellness, and joy in your life. We'll offer expert information and insightful conversations to help us on our journey to live more in vibe. For more information and articles, remember to also check out our website at invibelife.com. That's E-N-V-I-B-E. L-I-F-E dot com. We're grateful that you're here. Welcome to In My Life Conversations with Amy Parker and Cheryl Dunn and our special guest today, Karen Cooper from KarenCooperHealing.com. Karen is an intuitive medium, no, a psychic medium and intuitive healer. Yeah. And it's been a long day. It's Sorry, late in the day. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for coming on today, Karen. Thank you both for having me. It's my honor. You're welcome. We have known Karen for many years. Um, we have all worked with the same spiritual teacher in the past, but we have gotten to know Karen recently now in her own right as a healer in this way. And she has started to collaborate with Invibe Life, being a part of our Nourish event and agreeing to come on the podcast. And so it's so fun to take all of our relationships to this next level and new place. But I think the first thing everyone wants to know is who is Karen and how did you develop these gifts? How did you know you have them? And what does it mean to be yeah. psychic? What is a psychic medium? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. There are all sorts of misconceptions. So I'll try to hopefully um, share some today that will help people just have a, a little bit better idea, and, you know, not some of the negative connotations as well that are out there. So um, this being able to connect with people who have passed and um, just to really um, have an awareness of my knowing has been something that has been with me since I was little. And um, I I remember being, although I didn't know that that's what I was doing. Was that scary? Was, Sorry, scary for you when you were little. You know, it was not. I think it was just because it was just part of. I didn't know any better, <laughs> you know, and I just kind of knew that I was, you know, could talk to people and things. Um, but when I did start to realize that not everyone else was doing that and that it was a little weird, oh, I quickly shut down to it. So yeah, I, I think it wasn't because it was scary. It was because it, no one, you know. When you get to be kind of preteen and no one else, you want to be exactly like everyone else. So I did shut down to it for many years. And um, I grew up in a small town in South Texas. And so there wasn't really a lot of talk about, you know, this spirit, anything spiritual or psychic or medium. And so I really um, just didn't have, I, I would say I wasn't, it wasn't nurtured in me, you know. And so I shut down and went on to just have a normal growing up teenager, you know, getting into trouble all the time, um, voted most mischievous in high school. <laughs> my was so disappointed. I can't picture that I at can't. all. <laughs> my mother was so disappointed. She was like, wait, what about the most likely to succeed? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yes, I was definitely just, you know, had a normal upbringing and then came up here to Austin to go to UT and later married and had children and moved and lived in Australia and just was working in the business world and really just 
you know, kind of going on about my way. And then um, I started having the experiences of people who had passed connecting or just partially coming in and here and there. And I started noticing it again. And um, one example of that when it first started happening for me was I was just, um, you know, waking up or I wasn't quite awake. I was in that half asleep, half awake um, place in my bed at home. My eyes were closed and I saw in my mind's eye um, this girl and I recognized her from that I'd gone to high school with her, but she was a couple of years older than me and I really didn't know her other than I knew other than that I knew that her mother and my mother had worked together at the telephone company. And she said to me, I mean, I even said her name like Mary. And she said, yes, please tell my parents I'm okay. And I was very resistant to it. And I remember I even said to her, I don't, I don't think I'm going to do that. And she said, no, please tell my parents I'm okay. And so I woke and thought about it during the day. And then finally I called my mom and framed it as I had a dream, you know, I had the weirdest dream and, you know, Mary was in it. And she said to tell her parents, she's okay. And my mother really just gasped. And she said, Oh my gosh, I just got a call from her mother yesterday. I have not talked to her in over 10 years. And she said that Mary had passed a few years ago from a seizure. So while I wasn't willing to call Mary's parents, my mother was for sure. And she called and then later relayed to me that they had found that so comforting and that it was just really, they really just needed to know that she was okay. And um, so I got to kind of see the healing aspect of it. Um, and, and that, and then it, it started happening in other places and popping up, you know, people I didn't know and stuff. And I did, I resisted it for quite a while, but once I started really recognizing that this was helpful and healing for others, um, I started opening more and more to it. So that's, I, you know, I definitely pushed back and tried to, you know, have a different career and go a different path, but it just is, um, I think, you know, it just kind of found me. And so I, that's what I'm doing now. So can you turn it on and off? I mean, like when you're ordering your coffee at Starbucks, are you thinking, <laughs> Hey, Barista, you need to know. <laughs> I think there's a, the, the television show Long Island medium or whatever, who it will show her and she's just in the store and she's like, Oh yeah. So I would say in the past before I really like developed it, you know, in a way that works for me, I believe, and others. Um, I didn't have any control over it. And, you know, like I literally couldn't go for a facial without, you know, that. And I, I have a quick example. I was having a facial and I had an eye mask on and I was getting a foot massage. And um, I kept hearing, ask if her sister was named after a grandmother. And I, I was like, no, no, I don't know her. I am not going to ask that. And it got louder and louder until finally I blurted it out. And then she answered, yes, she was. And then it was super quiet and she was wait, why did you ask that? So I had to then explain and her sister did come in and there was a healing moment. Actually, she had been carrying a lot of guilt about a car accident when they were young and, you know, and so I, but I still, you know, I didn't really like the fact that I couldn't turn it off. Um, but I had a mentor who gave me some beautiful advice about really creating a container for the work and an intention. And so basically just saying, okay, now I, you know, now I am open to this. And so that's really how it, you know, I kind of contain it more to my sessions. Having said that, sometimes there are people who come through or things that come through just because they need to, and they're meant to, you know, but I can, I don't know if it's so much turning it on or off or just sort of switching channels <laughs> or something, but yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't just, you know, um, interrupt my life and I can, you know, go to the movie. To carry around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. But so I also wonder, um, I asked you before if it was scary for you. I think sometimes for other people, they're scared when they hear that someone is psychic or has psychic abilities. Maybe that prevents them from seeking out the services of someone like you, or they even wonder, you know, is, is she going to just be telling me things I don't want to hear or what's going to come up? Yeah. What would you say to people about that? 
That's a good question because I think that is also a really important one. Um, so for me, when I open um, myself to this work with someone, I always say if it is in their highest and most benevolent outcome. So I know, and even opening, connecting with um, loved ones who have passed, I, I also say the same thing. So I know then that it is only ever for something positive, healing, connection, guidance type thing. And if people are coming with challenges, it's um, opening to what would be best for them. So there's not ever anything in my work, in my experience, this has been, you know, my truth of it, that there isn't anything scary or negative, or I don't get information, you know, that would be dark or scary. And thank you. That's a really good point. Because I've even had people, um, clients and that that will think I can read their mind. And that's not the case at all. And um, I, my teenage son for, you know, I didn't, unbeknownst to me for years, he thought I could read his mind. <laughs> and he told me and I was thinking, nope, that is absolutely the last thing on earth I would want to do. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't, I think there are a lot of people who might feel that it could be scary, or they might get bad news. And that is not the case with my work. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. I know I was raised um, Southern Baptist, mm -hmm. right? And even my great grandfather was a Southern Baptist minister and he passed when I was really young. So I, don't, I can't recall any experience with him. I can with his, you know, my great grandmother because she lived till she was very old. I remember her, but there was always a message passed down in the family that there was a story that he went in and saw a medium and came out and said, that is not from God and don't anybody do it. And that was kind of the thing that got passed down from him to my grandmother, to my, you know, my parents, to me. So of course I shut down to your anything, anybody that would offer your type of work. Mm -hmm. Then I went through my own, you know, trauma in my life. And Amy led me to the person we had spoken about as far as the common denominator we have as far as healers in our group. And that was such a healing moment for me. And so being able to open up to talking to a medium and getting the message and, you know, hearing it and experiencing it firsthand and knowing that this is from God. Right. And maybe that's my personal belief, but it's also something I felt so deeply in my heart, mm -hmm. you know, and then I had, because I felt it so deeply, I then had the courage to go back to my family and say, you will not believe this. And I did mm -hmm. preface it with, Mom, I got to tell you this because you're not going to unfriend me. You're not going <laughs> to disown me. You're not going to uninvite me to Christmas. But let me tell you this, you know, <laughs> and she, you know, obviously my mom and I are still very close. So she didn't do any of those things. She didn't have much to say, but she sat there and cried and cried and cried with the message I was able to give her because I was able to speak to a medium because it was so healing and so powerful. Yeah, I, you know, I can actually, I had. Uh, some similarities in that my personal experience, my personal journey with this. Um, I grew up, uh, again, as I said, in a small town. And I mean, I went to every vacation Bible school in town. I went, we went to a little conservative church that, you know, certainly would not, this was not part of, you know, things that were, you know, of God or okay or whatever. And, um, and while my kind of, um, beliefs and relationship with the ch a church, you know, changed churches and, you know, religion changed over the years as I grew older. I certainly did struggle. I went through a time struggling with wondering, is this okay? Can it really, can I believe in God and also connect, you know, with this other realm? And I, I did, I, I went back and forth about it, not being, um, not being able to be it, religious or believe in a God and also, you know, know that of this too. But I, after, I mean, I did a lot of meditating, contemplating prayer, and, you know, I've come to know, at least for myself, that it absolutely can coexist. And that, you know, I mean, I believe this journey um, that I'm on, like everyone else is divinely led. 
you know, that I wouldn't be opening to this in the way that I do if it wasn't something that was being, you know, put here for me. And I think um, it is also the way in which we do approach it too. Like I don't approach it, you know, for anything negative or, you know, to be used in any way that might not be um, for someone's, you know, highest and most benevolent outcomes. So I've come to resolve that conflict, that inner conflict that I had with religion and spirituality in general and this work. So, and, you know, I hope that a lot of other people can too, as they kind of just explore it on their own. So I'd say for me, a little different than what Cheryl would say, also grew up with a very traditional Catholic Christian upbringing. And I didn't have the experiences you had, Karen, but I've always had um, very high intuitive abilities, like knowing what was going to happen in someone's life before it happened, you know, to that ability. And I think it's that knowing you talked about. And because it was just such a, it was always there knowing and I believe in God and all of these things, it, it just, how would it not go hand in hand somehow? I don't know. So I still have that fear of judgment from others, I think, to put things like this out there or to let people know how fully I engage in those things. But I think if you have that knowing, you have that knowing, but that does bring up, it's not just the ability to connect with people who have passed over. There are other ways these abilities show up in our lives. And I think you believe that everyone can tune in to certain levels of their own intuitive and psychic abilities. I I absolutely do, you know, believe that we all have our own intuition and our own knowing and our own connection to what I refer to as divine wisdom. And so, and whether we open to it, you know, in this life on this journey or not, you know, some do, some don't. But, um, and I think that's why a lot of times people will will remember that, wow, when I was a kid, I remember that I knew that, you know, this, or I was, you were just, we haven't quite um, been told not to yet, you know, right. so that's, so, uh, you know, so I do believe it's something and what I experience um, in my work too, is that a lot of times when I work with a client and, you know, as they're actually, I guess I would refer to it as having a healing experience of connecting with someone um, maybe who has passed that, you know, they've there, it's part of their grieving process that it opens them in a way and opens their heart so that they then are able to just be a little more in tune with their intuition and their connection and really feel that connection with their loved one, or maybe be a little more aware and open to like the signs that they might be giving them to let them know that they're still there with them and connecting with them. So that's when, even though someone might just not be full blown open to all of this, they are able to um, experience it in a way that makes them, uh, helps them feel a little more connected, I think. So I want to talk a little bit about the healing, because I know when I had a session with you, you kept, or you said, you know, your eight-year-old self is showing up. And we went through a process there and talked about stuff. I want you to talk about what, what is that? And how does that work? (laughs) You know, what, why does that happen? Yeah. So I guess another aspect of my work, besides being the medium part is really connecting in with those who have passed. And I do want to add that this absolutely also includes our um, pets and our, you know, all, you know, all animals, which I think is beautiful. And I love to connect in with. Um, and well, I was going to bring that up because if you hear snoring or Cheryl and I giggling, it's, <laughs> it's because not- my dog, who <laughs> Cheryl is his favorite person in the oh. world, is asleep at Cheryl's feet. Yeah. And he He's is snoring sound really loud. Right <laughs> Amy and I are kind of rubbing him with our feet, going, "Wake up, just a little." <laughs> 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 Relaxed him. <laughs> oh, good. Well, so another part of the work is what I. I I refer to it as intuitive healing, and I'm not even sure if that's the best, you know, name for it, but I will connect into someone's energy field in the here and now and things that are going on in their lives or in their world. It can be anything from careers to relationships to situations, and it allows us then to have this zoomed out perspective 
of what's going on, maybe like beyond a behavior with someone or um, just to really get some, it's information gathering, like to really just see what, what, what's going on with this person. And the way that I kind of um, view it is my higher self connects with whomever's higher self. And that way they can tell me what's going on or what they're needing or, you know, what, what, what really is going on for them. And, um, I see it a lot of times. It's so helpful in relationships because we aren't always showing up and speaking and acting in, in the same way that's congruent with how we're feeling. Um, and, or we might be, you know, really still dealing with our own, you know, pain, hurt, whatever. And so it just, it allows for um, the client to maybe have decide to have more compassion in that area or to set a stronger boundary if there's something going. So there's, there, I find that that's really helpful, just connecting into their world. But also, like you mentioned, Cheryl, um, a lot of times I will see the client at an earlier age in their life. And usually it's the formative years. Um, you know, it can be a it can be any time, but a lot of times it is the formative years. And when I see them show up to me, at, I will be, they'll tell me how old they are, or sometimes it's a specific grade that they're in even because there was something that went on, you know, in fourth grade in particular. Um, I had one client um, and it was one of the first times that I saw them show up as a, and let me know their grade and not their age, but it was specific about this grade and what was going on and, you know, she, the chaos. And um, she actually had lived in fourth grade in Washington, D.C. during 9-11 and her oh, wow. father worked at the Pentagon. So there was a lot. And the other beautiful thing is when they show up, I know that they're showing up because there is something that is ready to be healed or let go of, or maybe um, a pattern has started that they've carried on throughout their life because it was a con became a conditioning or a belief system that you know served them in that moment, but does not continue to serve them. So it's a super gentle healing, um, not like what I experienced working with a lot of my um, you know life experiences um, doing my inner work years past where it would seem we had to dredge everything up and really rehash it, you know, almost like relive it. And that is not the case with this at all. This is such a gentle healing. It, it, it is literally them just asking for love and light and to be witnessed or what was needed at the time. Sometimes there was oh, like understanding cool. needed or compassion, or, you know, I didn't know, no one told me that I was going to be safe or, you know, whatever it is. And the really, I mean, uncanny thing that I see is then that healing transfers so gently to their present day situation. And a lot of times when that shows up of an earlier time in their life, there is something going on, almost it can be a theme like thing, but something going on that replicates or parallels that in, a, in some way. And as we do the healing on this earlier stage of their life, it transfers over and it just releases into their current day. And I, I couldn't really explain it if I had to, but witnessing it is so beautiful. And um, it just, it, I, I feel like it's just almost like they show up when they're ready for this. So yeah, that's another part of the work I that think we can attest to it. I think Cheryl and I both had that experience with the help of a healer and it really does just start to make huge changes in your life and it might not be something you thought was not, even there not at all I, I yeah it's definitely like something I know my experience was wow I didn't realize that I felt guilty for that mm -hmm. but then when you talked about it I was like oh yeah I guess I do mm -hmm. you know and then it allowed me to let that go yeah you know? so and and let it go present day you know like not feel yeah. guilty yeah. Present day. Yeah. Yes, definitely. And you're also a Reiki master and you bring that into your healing sessions as well. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm a certified Reiki master and I um, believe that all um, energy healing, channeled energy healing comes from the same source. That's just my belief of it. So I open to that just and integrate that in my sessions. I offer energy healing while we're having our interactive conversation. I will also, if people are looking to have it just, just 
some energy healing directed, maybe if there's a physical um, part that they want to address, absolutely, we can do that too. However, I will say that a lot of times when people present with something that's physical, which absolutely, it is real and physical, and I am not by any means discounting, you know, our physical ailments and things. But when we allow ourselves to feel and tune into it, there's something usually almost always underneath or the root of it or um, that is asking to to be addressed and healed. And then as we heal that, and it can be an emotional release, a lot of times it's emotional. Um, And because our bodies do store all sorts of our experiences and emotions. And as we're able to release that and heal and offer healing to that, it allows then the physical to resolve itself so much more easily, or, you know, the pain to, I think the pain is our body getting louder and louder when things start as a whisper and we're out of congruence with our own self or out of alignment with, you know, our truth or our authenticity starts as a whisper and it gets louder and louder until it's like, oh my gosh, my hip hurts so bad. I can hardly walk. So, you know, that's something that is, um, while Reiki is, you know, I guess the modality I believe it's just opening to the energy healing and kind of also just doing it all together. I love it. It's such good stuff. So I want to circle back. We talked about um, people who maybe resist being open to these spiritual gifts. What about those people out there who would like to open up to them more? How do you suggest they go about doing that? Well, I think for a lot of people, um, I'll I'll give an example. Sometimes when someone comes um, to me as a client and we connect with their loved one and and say they're in the grieving process, um, then there's something about them, you know, in their healing that it opens them in a way so that they are also, you know, just more open. And what I see is, and this was my experience, that as I addressed, the things that were what I call kind of clouding up my vessel a little bit, that's when I open to it. So when we um, meditate, when we, you know, do healing work, when we explore spirituality, just a lot of things that you guys actually address, you know, when we open to art, when we just all kinds of things that opens us up because we do all have this beautiful you know, connection to divine wisdom. But when we have got all of our life experiences and, you know, piled on and the pains and fears and that, that's when it's a little harder to hear or, you know, be aware of. So I think it's all about just kind of doing our, um, doing what we need to do to clear that part, those parts. Maybe just even acknowledging that there's value in it and worthiness in doing it. Yes. I think that's true. Um, I think that um, luckily more and more people are understanding about the mind, body, and soul connection and how that it is an important part of, um, it is an important part of our our health and wellness, I believe. Um, And so while my work, you know, yes, of course, the psychic medium, you know, is there's one aspect of it, but what the part that I really do love to um, address is the part that is for the healing on all levels. And that's why I think it doesn't always have to do with um, just connecting with someone who has passed. A lot of times it's for the other reasons for what's in our energy field now and in our lives now. So um, I want to add one more thing about just the, um, because I like when we were talking about how sometimes people have misconceptions and things with um, psychic medium that, One other beautiful part around the mediumship um, work for me is that a lot of times uh, people will connect in with someone and it's because they've, they're coming to offer guidance. And um, what I've experienced is, is that when someone passes, they have this beautiful opportunity to heal all of the parts of themselves that they maybe weren't able to heal while they were here and come into their wholeness and to their true nature. And so it's from this place then that they're able to guide 
you know, the loved ones that are still here on this earth. So that's another aspect of mediumship, the guidance in our everyday lives that I don't think people would be expecting maybe when they were coming, you know, to um, connect with someone. And also that people that they might not be expecting to connect with show up and just to um, kind of remind them of um, something of themselves. Um, I have a quick example of uh, one time I had someone come through and I could see that he was a young man. And, you know, I, I was getting that he was probably high school age and maybe in an accident. And my client, when she realized who it was, he was, she of course hadn't really thought about him in many, 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 many years. It wasn't close to him necessarily at that time, but the reason he was coming through to connect with her was to let her know he was sort of an outlier and didn't really have a lot of friends and that, and she had always been really nice to him and just, you know, spoke to him or included him in some way. And he just wanted to connect with her to express his gratitude and to let her know that, that the way that, because that's how she is in her life now too, but to let her know how valued that is. So I think sometimes it's just really little things that we might not even be thinking of or wanting to connect about, but it's, you know, it reminded her about how it's so important to see people or to connect. So that, that's just a little example, of a different way in which it kind of shows up sometimes. I think our listeners would be disappointed if we didn't ask you the big question, who's showing up, showing up here tonight? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So part of my, you know, container is that I just, I, I, I have some open boundaries. It up, open it up. <laughs> I will say that I, you know, uh, was a little nervous about coming on. And so I, I noticed my grandmother showed up for me, my grandmother, who's, who's passed. So she's been here with me while we've been doing this. She has had her hands on my back and just kind of, you know, letting me know. And so um, I'm not sure who's, who might be there with you guys, because I've been paying too much attention to my own world over here. <laughs> but yeah. that brings up an interesting point. Can you work with people as well over Zoom or virtually now as when before COVID you saw pay, uh, clients in person? Yes, thankfully, um, and I say energy is energy. Um, I, you know, before COVID and when I was seeing people in an office, I also did have a few clients that were overseas that I would, you know, do um, a FaceTime or Zoom with, but, you know, it just wasn't really the norm. So I was, I wasn't even, you know, sure that this would be as effective. And absolutely, um, I think I, all the feedback that I get and my experience of the sessions is that it is equally um, powerful, connecting, healing. Um, I do hope to soon be able to get back into an office space and be able to offer both um, when it's safe to do so. But um, absolutely, I'm really grateful that working virtually, you know, helps. And so if anyone out there wants to find you, www.karencooperhealing.com. Did I get yeah, that right? That's right? And so we'll have that in our show notes and Karen's information on how you can find her because it is really, uh, to me, that's one of the gifts of COVID. We are so much more interconnected with one another and we realize how interconnected we are with one another, including being able to go virtually with anyone yes. anytime. That's right. So we always ask our guests at the end, what do you do to bring balance to your day? So let's see. I, one of the things that I do um, is I meditate and, you know, I found that that is that something that when I notice when I am doing that, that it really does have such a positive effect on my life and my balance. And and when it, if I don't do it, I absolutely can tell. So I do meditate and it doesn't have to be, you know, I don't sit down for an hour, you know, repeating ohms. I just, you know, to meditate. I love, I'm terrible at it, but I love yoga. So I incorporate that into, you know, my routine as much as possible. And now that can also be done virtually. I love that. Um, and I, I, being outside and being, you know, in nature and getting to just feel like, for me, that feels like kind of a place of like letting go and just, you know, keeping myself clean in that way, um, like my vessel. So being out in nature, and I believe also that laughter is super important in keeping balanced. And so I 
um, love to spend time with friends and just, you know, act silly and just have a good laugh because I do feel like, um, you know, this work that I do, even if, even if it is, um, in helping someone with their grieving process and stuff, it always does feel so beautiful to me and fulfilling. So it doesn't, I don't feel down because of it at all. So, but I do feel like laughter is just important in general. And so, yeah, that's what I do. Awesome. Love it. We're so happy that we are able to collaborate with you in this way. And we hope that we will have many more podcasts and events Events. Yes, (laughs) um, and continue to work together and um, share this message. So thank thank you for joining us. Thank you, ladies. It was my pleasure and honor. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to Invibe Live Conversations. For more information and to join our community, be sure to check out our website at invibelive.com. We look forward to sharing with you.